What's up and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to make my personal favorite synth sound and show you what it can teach you about sound design. Because it's a fairly simple sound, but the elements that go into it go a long way towards creating not just an individual sound, but an entire kind of atmosphere around it. This video is blatantly inspired by a video that Ricky Tinez did a while back where he walked people through his favorite bass sound and how to make it, and I figured I would kind of adapt that idea for my favorite kind of synth lead slash pad sound. I'm demonstrating this on the Korg mini log, but I've recreated it on other synths like the Micro Freak, and you probably will be able to too. All that being said, here's the sound we're going to be making. <laughs> So I'm going to recreate that from scratch here. You noticed a bit of voice stealing. Let's get to a new patch. That's fine. I actually ended up sampling this into my MPC-1 with its auto sampler feature, which does give me unlimited polyphony. And uh, for recording a version of that synth part, I recorded it in multiple chunks so everything could overlap because the overlapping is really important to me. It's something I've really come to love is a sound that can ring out for a long period of time and all the notes kind of bleed into each other. That's a key part of the sound. It can sound very beautiful, in my opinion. This is a saw wave. Beautiful in its own way, but uh, not super floaty. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I've got both of my oscillators audible. Make sure these are both set to saw waves. And then set one an octave up. So we've got two saw waves at two different octaves. That's the basic setup. I'm going to leave shape alone for now. And um, what I've just done here on the mini log is just control their balance. Also, pay attention to the subtle phase cancellation that happens when the two saw waves at different octaves are layered on top of each other. It happens naturally, but it creates a bit of movement and shimmer that help bring the sound to life. So now I'm going to bring in the filter. And this goes a long way towards making even a harsh sounding synth sound pretty and kind of go out of its way to be like, hey, I'm analog. I'm an analog synth, even for non-analog synths. It can really, using your filter and then a pitch warble, which I'm going to show you in a second, go a long way towards making something that sounds vintage, but can still sound quite modern. So I'm going to crank the release, first of all. This is on my amp. So now the sound is ringing out a bit more. Maybe I'll turn up that octave up a little bit. I want to get rid of that sharp attack. Just roll it off just a little bit. And then I'm going to not touch this yet. I'm just going to bring in the filter envelope. So you hear how it's doing the stepped thing. Not really getting the idea across, so I'm just going to turn up the release, first of all. It's getting closer. This is a nice filter, so that definitely helps. Actually, on two pull, it sounds pretty nice. There's a smoothness to it, where it lets the high frequencies through so it doesn't sound muffled. But it's a lot gentler, it's tamed it a bit. I could also turn on key tracking. That's already getting there. So what this is doing, by the way, is it's opening up the filter slowly. If I turn this down, you'll be able to hear it a little better. It's not doing a whole lot else. In fact, that's a bit much. I want there to be a really subtle little lead into it, but not so much that it takes forever to come in. Unless it's a pad, in which case I'll turn this way down. Let it take its time to come in. But in this case, this is more of a lead element. So I just want to get rid of that super defined attack. 
mess with the resonance a little bit, but that's not really doing much for me. So here's the other secret sauce, pitch warble. People always spend so much time with digital tech trying to make stuff sound perfect, and now we're trying to deliberately make it sound imperfect again because it sounds nostalgic. So in this case, I've gone to my LFO, low frequency oscillator. It's going to subtly move the pitch up and down. So I'm going to mess with the rate a bit. I've got this on a triangle wave. So I'll just go up and down at a constant rate. And then turn up the amount. So that rate's about right. Doesn't have to be synced to the tempo or anything, it just has to sound right. Try to keep this subtle. Let me set that back to four pull. You hear the difference that pitch warble makes? Here's without. Here's with a subtle amount. Brings it to life. And I like both of these iterations of it for different reasons. I think this one would fit a lot better in a mix, especially when you start to have other elements come in. But by itself, I like the four pole version better. So yeah, a filter that comes in slowly, but not that slowly. A pitch warble, and uh, you've got yourself a pretty good, very obviously analog patch. It can be a great pad. It can also be kind of nice if you go up a few octaves. This pitch warble can also be how you get the Kid Cudi pad sound. It's a very spacey sound, which is why I love it. And let's say that we actually want to embrace how cold and harsh this synth can sometimes sound. We're up a couple octaves already. What if we get rid of the pitch warble and change our filter envelope so it takes a little longer to kick in, but the filters open quite a bit more. This will float right to the top of a mix. Let me mess with my attack a bit. So that's not having the effect I want. Let's try this. Remember, we've still got our saw oscillators an octave apart from each other, and we've removed our pitch warble. So now... It's kind of a haunting sound. You see the subtle phase cancellation going on between the two oscillators. Once again, super simple. Ow. But it can really go a long way. And then if we crank the resonance, maybe uh, just make this mono. Turn the EG the other way. And you get that bass. So in this case, I've brought back a bit of low end by changing these to be the same octave, these two oscillators, and by changing one of them to a triangle wave, which is a little bit cleaner sounding, so that low end comes through a little better. But you can hear that phase cancellation going on, so I might change this back to mono, in which case, it sounds a little chunkier, but you lose some of that size. As you can see, some fairly simple tools can go a long way towards getting you some proper vintage sounds that still, in my opinion, don't really sound dated. They still sound futuristic, or at least 
like space. If you're interested in sound design but still don't fully understand the basics yet, you might want to check out this video that I did that should hopefully help it make a lot more sense. And if you'd like to figure out how to pick out your first hardware synth, you can click or tap up over here. I've got a video on that as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.